Let's talk a, a bit about the Voice of Fire controversy, if you remember oh. that was in Ottawa, and I think it was in the early 80s, and the, and the National Gallery had bought a... a, a, a 18 a Newman, foot right? high Barnett Newman. It yes. was a Newman, 18 the feet high, three colors, and the government at the time said, why did you spend two million? The price of art is, is a marketplace factor, so sometimes if you're not involved in that world, uh, these can seem like extraordinary large sums. Today, if you wanted that Newman, I suspect it would be 50 million. If it was available, which it's not, and there aren't any available really. There's, I know of one painting possibly that one might be able to buy. Uh, but Newman did a very small number of paintings. Uh, this was a painting actually exhibited in Canada in 67 at, the, uh, at Expo. Um, but what was interesting about it was that Newman was an inspiration for many, many artists and the roots of, of many, many ideas. Uh, he was essentially a philosopher who made pictures uh, and uh, was of a generation who overcame extraordinary uh, challenges and, and changed the nature of visual arts and, and certainly made, it, uh, made abstraction much more intelligible and engaging with, uh, and engageable. So he, he was, if you were involved in looking at painting, to own Newman was a very important step in a national gallery that might would want to go beyond nationalism, a gallery that wanted to speak to the world. What was interesting about the controversy is it took two parts. One part was the part where the representative from the Midwest who said, this isn't art and my child could do it. Give me three cans of paint and I'll do it for That's you. right. And then the the flare of, of provincialism in Canadian nationalism that said we've spent two million dollars on this foreign artist and we aren't spending it on our own artists and uh, we, are, we were in fact spending it on our own artists. We had Canada Council, we had all sorts of grant systems that the Americans looked to for their national endowment for the arts that we had set the model for going back to Vincent Massey. Uh, so it, it was, I thought, of an inappropriate response to a country that was maturing and taking its place in the world and saying, look, we are, we are a place that can engage with ideas from anywhere mm -hmm. and we're as interesting a place to visit because we will present our artists in an international context and see how we stand up and maybe we stand up very well. And in fact, that comes back to the Jack Bush because at this point, we're 33 years from his passing, he will land someplace between Wilhelm Hammershoi, who is a Danish artist of 1900, and Munch and Van Gogh as a representative of who we are as a country. And we don't know where he'll land in that extreme. All three important artists, one held back by being from a very small country and them not embracing him as much as perhaps they should have, because he certainly is one of their most exportable artists. Uh, and well, that's the provincial side of that argument about the, the voice of fire. Yes. What about the other side, the, the MP from the Midwest who said, give my child three cans of paint and I can do it? I find that I enjoy a baseball game. I have, I have season tickets and I follow it a bit, but people who really love baseball speak a language I don't. They understand the, the details of it in a way that I actually find interesting and when I'm around them I, I, I'm willing to listen to them. I haven't put in the effort to have the right to say which pitcher they should trade this year or who should be playing first base or who we should be buying or what the statistics are because I haven't made the effort. Uh, there are a lot of languages I don't speak. You know, if, if uh, you know, I, but it's more to do with our sense of security and self. I don't feel threatened that I don't speak Japanese and that a lot of people are able to communicate in that language and do extraordinarily wonderful things that I can't do. Somehow someone feels threatened that someone speaks in a language that right. they don't understand. Uh, the theater doesn't have that problem. Right. We speak a language that everyone can understand. 
but not everyone wants to engage with the stories we want to tell. And some of the stories are aimed at small audiences and are appropriate to theaters in 240 seats. It doesn't make the story less valuable or less worthwhile. It just means that it has an audience.